Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, the gracious, the most merciful. In today's episode, we will be examining the 11th chapter from the Holy Quran, Surah Hud or Abr. A chapter which was revealed in the holy city of Mecca with 123 verses. This chapter was revealed in a year known as the year of sorrow or sadness. Amul Huzn is the name that the Prophet Muhammad gave to the last year of his settlement in the holy city of Mecca. The reason being is because in that particular year he lost the most beloved people to him including his uncle Abu Talib who was his strongest supporter who was his biggest ally. In that year he also lost his beloved wife Khadija who was his greatest of supporters. And the Prophet Muhammad loved Khadija unconditionally. Therefore, this chapter was revealed in a time where the Muslim community, I imagine, was fatigued and scared and afraid. And God sends this chapter with the story of the Prophet Hud, Abr, the Prophet Salih and several other prophets to tell the Muslim community that those people within your community today or other tribes surrounding you who may seem as the most powerful people, they may seem like nothing would ever change them from being the most powerful people. Today, they are intoxicated by their, by their pride and by their glory. But if God wishes, He will turn things around to your favor. To the favor of those who are seeing injustice just because they believe in God and they want to be righteous people. People who have not harmed anybody. And those who kill them and prosecute them, prosecute them just because of their religion will be facing the punishment of God. And that's just how it's been in the course of history. That is why the greatest of countries are based on religious tolerance and religious freedom. No matter what religion you, are, you have, you should be able to practice that freely. And that is the message of the Quran. The freedom is not just seeked and and wished for and wished upon just for the Muslim community. No. On the contrary, the Quran also says that we must ensure the rights of everybody and not force them to change their religion. God says in chapter 2, لا إكراه في الدين. There is no compulsion in religion. Therefore, you cannot force anybody to change their faith. Hundred and twelve. Stay firm and steadfast alongside those who believe in you. After this chapter was revealed, they say that the Prophet Muhammad's beard turned gray the companions went to him O oh, the messenger of God we saw that your beard suddenly turned white Ya Rasulullah Qad asra shaybu ilayk he responds by stating Shayyabatni Surah Hud the 11th chapter Surah Hud has turned my beard gray why? Because God here orders the Prophet Muhammad, you must remain patient. There is no other way around. 
And this is a message for me and you, brothers and sisters, and to the Muslim community then and until today. And whoever is facing injustice and difficulty and tough times in their lives today. One of the most beautiful verses that I believe is a lessonful verse for everybody that recites the Quran is the 43rd ayah within this chapter. قَالَ سَآوِي إِلَىٰ جَبَلٍ يَعْصِمُنِي مِنَ الْمَاءِ Noah's son, when his father was telling him that, Son, soon there will be a flood. And everybody will be flooded. Come and join the ark. You will be saved. What did he say? He said, Father, I will take a refuge to the tallest of mountains and I will be saved. This is a lesson for those who sometimes face difficulty from their children. You do what it takes. But if your child still is disobedient, disrespectful, then that is your test from God, just like Noah was tested. And it's also an eye-opening ayah for those who feel, I have enough to protect me against God. I have enough power. I'll, I'll go save myself somehow. I have some savings somewhere. Nobody knows about them. And that is the mentality and the mindset of this young man, the son of Noah. Nothing can save you. If God decides that this person has engaged in too much injustice. In fact, there is a tradition that says angels end up laughing two times. You know, angels don't have emotions. They don't laugh. But when do they laugh? When... God wants to bring someone down and people want to raise him and vice versa. There is another beautiful phenomenon introduced in this 11th chapter of the Holy Quran. God said in the verse 50th and in the verse 61st that Hud, Arbor, and Salih were the brothers of their people. Now, mind you, they are prophets and their people are rejectful individuals to the call of God. How is it that they're brothers? God wants to say that, look, I chose prophets amongst them. They spoke like them. They dressed like them. They acted like them. They were amongst them. I did not choose some people that went and were imported to them. What does this mean? Today, a lot of us, a lot of the younger generation that's grown up in the West has trouble connecting with individuals that are imported, that do not speak their language, are propagating the religion of Islam, are trying to give the religion and teach the religion to the masses, but it's just not a successful endeavor. Why? Because I, and along with hundreds of people, thousands of people, and millions of Muslims in America, don't feel connected. We feel that those people don't understand our troubles. We are not brothers. God said about Hud and Salih, even though their people rejected them, but He said they were like brothers to them. They spoke like them. They acted like them. They were amongst them. And that is something that we must take extremely seriously, brothers and sisters, when picking the educators at our local mosques, schools, and Islamic organizations. To make sure that they are brothers to those people. Number 113, where God says, Do not join those who do injustice, for the punishment that will go to them will also come to you. Meaning, I see a lot of people today saying, Well, we don't care that this person is doing so much injustice. This person, we don't care this person is wrong. He's a he's a bad boss, he's a bad president, he's He's a bad representative. He's, a, he's doing so much wrong. He hasn't done anything bad to me. In fact, I have mutual benefits. God said this mentality is wrong. You cannot do that. And last but not least, the 115th verse from this chapter, Allah says, وَاصْبِرْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Be patient, for God will never be indifferent towards the good doers. If you're doing good, then remain patient and God is going to look after you. With that said, I leave you under the protection of the Almighty God. Wassalamu alaikum.